In October of 1986, Pope John Paul II invited all of the leaders of the major religions of the world to come together in the historic town of Assisi for prayer, a prayer for peace. This event electrified the world, and it pointed to the deepest realities that constitute interreligious dialogue. Interreligious dialogue seeks to build bridges among faiths, to recognize that in the splendor of the human heart, across every culture and time, men and women seek to discern and understand the transcendent and how it can be a blessing and a grace for them in their own lives and the lives of the human community. Interreligious dialogue recognizes that men and women find different pathways to the transcendent. And it understands that authentic interreligious dialogue recognizes the duty for us all in our conscience to be faithful to our own religious tradition in dialogue. And in that faithfulness, discover the richness of other faiths and religions which bind us together and also those elements which set us apart. Interreligious dialogue recognizes that at the deepest level of the human heart, we are called to be with one another, searchers in this world for the most important human questions that confront us. The question of who we are, of why we are here in this world, and ultimately, what is our destiny as men and women living and beyond this life here on this earth. Interreligious dialogue is a recognition that the human family is bound together, not merely by common needs or by common traumas and tragedies, but much more fundamentally by a common understanding of the sacred dignity of the human person which is rooted in the transcendent. For us as Catholics, the mandate for interreligious dialogue is found in the document of the Second Vatican Council entitled Nostra Etate, which says that interreligious dialogue is an authentic effort of the church to testify to the unity of the human family to discern in all of the major religions pathways to the transcendent, to build bridges upon those common pathways, and to recognize the differences which exist and not to let them become barriers or sources of antagonism. In a very real way, the spirit of interreligious dialogue is found in the teaching of Pope Francis, who calls us all to a culture of encounter in our everyday life, meaning that we are called always to see in our relations with others an encounter of the heart and the soul and a respect and a reverence for every man and woman who has been created on this earth. In that culture of encounter, in dialogue with other faiths, in theological dialogue, which is sophisticated, and in the dialogue of communities coming together in prayer and in service. In all of these ways, interreligious dialogue makes us one in our humanity while recognizing that there are different pathways to God which we always must honor.